to Yu-Gi-Oh! Breakdown Archetype So now I'm going to talk about Archetype in this video. So Archetypes, you know, when they first started in Yu-Gi-Oh! just generally regarded just, you know, a monster name or a card name. Don't sound so surprised. This similar name that was on all cards. But obviously over time this has evolved to be something more, something grander. So bearing all that in mind, I think what I want us to focus on right now is how we move from the problem phase of the problem to the solution phase of the problem. Okay, not what I had in mind. So now, an archetype consists of various things. One, it consists of, first of all, a searcher. So there's usually a monster and a spell or a trap card in some cases that searches monsters, that searches monsters, spells or traps in that archetype. Okay, that makes sense. There's usually something called uh, reinforcement of the army. Uh, why I mentioned reinforcement of the army because this is our first searcher spell we got in the game that searches warriors, and now it's become a recurring trend to call every searcher card in Yu-Gi-Oh a rota. You know the abbreviation for reinforcement of the army. Okay, and the second thing is the summoner. So usually in archetypes, and this definitely started about during the Gladiator Beast time, we got these cards that allowed you to summon cards from your hand or deck. And really it was the start of the Gladiator Beast archetype that really introduced the summoner. This was the first uh, deck we, we have that really brought about what we know today as, you know, spamming monsters all out of the blue. Are you freaking kidding me? You know, it was the first time we got a monster got limited simply for being able to be just swarmed on the field. I don't believe what I'm hearing. A Gladiator Beast Gazaris is such an example, which is a monster that could just be special summoned so many times. Hold up! Wait a minute! I swear. I've heard this story before. It's a uh, time of release that it got limited. Obviously, over time it got released back, but we come to obviously the summoner. Okay, so first of all, as I said, we have the searcher and then the summoner. Okay, we have the third thing, which is the third thing, right? Which is so first I said summoner, second I said was whatever. Um, many would think I'd say negation, but negation is something that happened is very recent it's quite a late thing i think the next thing is usually the boss monster so this again was something that wasn't in archetypes really i mean you know before we generally you know before we had the boss monster it was generally just the summoner and searcher generally most archetypes you know during the yugi the yugioh format the jaden format you know with fusions coming to single format we just had you know a searcher and a summoner but it was it was not until we got into the pendulum format that we really started to begin and in synchro format really that we started to have boss monsters and it was really the inclusion of Clifford towers from the pendulum format that began our descent to a boss monster doesn't it bother you even a little a boss monster in an archetype is that sort of monster that just is an oppressive uh, card that sits on the board that negates uh, your opponent's abilities you know, to play with a specific mechanic. Sounding awfully familiar? Yes, it is the Cleford boss monster that really s cemented what we know as Yu-Gi-Oh today. It can't be with negation, with you know, with negation fatigue and all other things in our game that we have currently. So obviously we have first we have the you know the. The searcher, we have second, which is a summoner, and then we have the third thing, which is the boss monster. And finally, the fourth thing. So, with the fourth thing comes negation. Now, negation, again, this is something that also happened during the pendulum phase. Uh, this was the start of us getting more and more monsters that had, that have negation. And definitely, it's not particular monster that had it. There's several monsters, you know, during this format that really uh, incentivized, that really popularized this negative notion. 
whether it was Odai's Vortex Dragon, whether it was, you know, the negative loop of Mist Valley Apex Avion combined with the Great Shogun Shien, you know, loops, uh, cards that allow you to negate multiple times, having a negate loop, you know, this Anybody care about what I want? start of oppressive negation. Obviously, in Yu-Gi-Oh, we've had negation, you know, in, in the past. It's always been there, but we've never had negation used in an oppressive way. I mean, you know, it just really wasn't there. And the Pendulum format really introduced the oppressive way of using negation. And in your heart, you know I'm right. You know, obviously now it's devolved to, you know, we have now negation fatigue. But obviously back then, negation wasn't as prevalent and more as, as oppressive as we have it today so that is the fourth thing when it comes to an archetype i can explain let me explain let's break it down to the four things that i've just mentioned so first is the searcher so now with all archetypes now you can expect for there to be a searcher card you know um over time this has changed before it was a spell card now the searcher mechanic human archetypes has grown and it's become more expansive it's not only can be just a spell card it could be a monster card as well that searches spells or traps it's very very expansive there's a lot of uh, cards that search in archetypes now it's completely different to how uh, it is than when the concept first started and the next thing is you know the summoner you know the card that spams out monsters on the board this is something that's completely changed since this started in uh, you know the gladi when we had gladiator beast for the first time i mean when it first came out you know the card cards that summoned a lot were limited back then but now you can find cards that summon themselves all the time i mean special summoning is not special anymore i think this is something that definitely needs to be said aha a trick really changed and archetypes now we we'll tend to find loads of archetypes have lots of ways of summoning themselves onto the board summoning don't tell me are few and are very very few and are not even just few and far between but there's so many of them in fact there's too much cards that summon themselves now um, you know, the third thing, as I was saying, is a boss monster. You know, back then when this came out, you know, something like Clifford Towns or something, you'd only find in, you know, an archetype. Now, as the game has evolved, as the game is changing, as I light up the situation, right? Boss monsters can be found aplenty, you know, whether it's, whether it's in an archetype, whether it's just a generic boss monster out the blue, you know, like we've got right now, like Dragoon, you know, we can just splash in, you know, in any other, in any of the deck, you know what I mean? Boss monsters now are not as special as they once was because you can find them everywhere like every single archetype you know like has a boss monster nowadays it's, it's it's just like candy i don't want to live on this planet anymore and then the final thing you know the fourth thing is the negation now again negation is something that has evolved that has evolved to an oppressive stance i never thought of it that way before and back when it first started we did have negation yes but it wasn't oppressive you couldn't stack up the negation i don't believe you now you can but you know when we had the concept of negation you know, back when the game first started you know and as it evolved negation was just something there that was it was an add-on it was something that if you could do you know, if you planned for it and you could do it great fantastic right but if you couldn't do it then obviously you know you can't do it it wasn't something you needed to have it was it was nice to have it was a nice bonus but again negation wasn't the be all and end all okay i think that's about it so as you can see i've been talking about an archetype and really what it is so as you've seen it comes down to four things it comes down to the searcher the summoner the boss monster and negation yeah let's just move here negation right so these are things that obviously as archetypes are now growing it's something that we are seeing now in the current game obviously there are other things that are coming up like disruption but we've now gone to the really far end as you've noticed with negation negation <gasps> negation is something that has gone 
a little bit overboard, I think. I think ever since the pendulum format, ever since that format, we have increased our negation count to a whole new level. I mean, it's absolutely insane when you think about it, just how many decks have an Omni Negate. Com anyway, one day I wake up and I look in the mirror and I don't like what I see. Compared to 2017, compared to you know, 2014. I mean, back in 2014, the only mechanic that had negation and was using negation to its utmost fullest was the pendulum mechanic. You know, come to link format, and you know, it slowly starts to creep in, where like most archetypes are just having negation, and just generic negation was thrown out of the wazoo. The fact that, you know, we get a card like Impermanence again, which completely is splashed around in every single deck. Well, Impermanence, again, is a very healthy card. Again, nothing wrong with it, but when you have cards that have negation, which are generic, you know, like Impermanence, seeing more and more card types like these, which have no negative side. Another thing as well that has really come about with, you know, with archetypes is that they have evolved to be engines. I mean, before when we had archetypes, they would have a particular play style, they would do a particular thing. But as this year has definitely shown, you know, archetypes are now just playing in the similar way. Especially in the TCG, I can't really say anything about the OCG because I don't know much about, you know, that format, you know. But in the TCG, we are, we are experiencing, we have been experiencing for quite a while now, um, just negation being so prevalent in our game. It's now like the be all and end all. Coming to the point where like archetypes aren't even considered, you know, competitive if they don't have negation in them. If they have no negation, they're considered some trash. This is some trash. This is some garbage, right? Just leave it. And this is a topic I'll definitely talk about in my uh, next video. Let's explain you know, generic versus negation, but leaving that aside, and that's a video that I will be speaking about in another time, generally archetypes are things now that are beginning to lose their flavor in terms of, you know, play style and, you know, interesting mechanics, because this is something that's beginning to fade, and it's, it's, and I'm beginning to notice that more and more archetypes that are coming out are having a less interesting playstyle and even when, when they do have a less interesting playstyle they're not really something that is used in a competitive uh, metagame which is a shame because before i mean you know archetypes did would be part of our metagame regardless of whether they had negation or not like for example prank kids on its release you know was something that had did have a lot of negation in it no um, but it was in our meta game. It did top regionals. It did top, you know, worlds. And you know, it was something that was there that really did do a lot of things. Again, Salaman Great is another example of another archetype that did um, top as well, especially in the TCG. Did the archetype have a lot of negation? In fact, yes, it did. It, it was the reason why it topped a lot was because it had, you know, you could incorporate, you can incorporate ha uh, Ash Blossom into it because it's a fire, return the Ash Blossom back. It had a very strong recycling element for hand traps, for negation. And I think basically Salaman Great is the stepping stone of the decks we have now. This is the product, this is the result of, de of the decks we have today because Salaman Great really showcased that you don't need to uh, have a deck with an interesting playstyle as long as you add a lot of negation as long as you have a core engine of the deck works you don't really need to be having an interesting playstyle just if your deck works if your engine works is resilient just you know chuck in the negation chuck in the hand traps chuck in all those stuff you know it doesn't really matter you're going to win anyway and so yeah, so that's something I just want to say about um, you know archetypes. Obviously, in you know new archetypes is something that has changed over time. It's definitely changed from you know archetype, you know, from an interesting mechanic to just negation. But maybe you know it's going to change 
you know, for the better, maybe we will enter a format where we will go away from this negation fatigue. You know, who knows? Who knows? Who knows? You know, we, I don't know the future, but are things looking interesting? It, it, it's hard to say. Really. It's really hard to say. And, but that's all I've got to cover. That's all I've got to say, really, about archetypes. And that's generally it. <laughs> yes, I like it. Okay, and I believe that is the end of this video. And so, as I usually say, you are one step closer to becoming a Yu-Gi-Oh! Master. My fate is in your hands. Like and subscribe. Um, and that's all really I want to say as we put this video to a close. So, you're going to see some icons appear which will showcase the other videos on my channel. Hope to see you soon. Goodbye.